Just over my shoulder is the Riverside Theater, one of the more iconic theaters here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, and one of three that Gary Witt brought back to life. He also brought in a terrific chef by the name of Kevin Sloan. When touring bands and artists come to Milwaukee, the meal that they get before they play might be their only representation of a city. And the artists that come through Milwaukee, they found a home on the road unlike anywhere else in America. We're here to meet with Gary and see what terrific food Chef Sloan and his cohorts are cooking behind the scenes before the lights come up. It's the backstage knock. Hey! Gary Witt! Where's your backstage pass? Oh, dude, you're not going to do that to me. I know the chef. All right, you can come back. Thank you. Good to see you. Come on in. <laughs> Here's the theater. Oh, ho, ho. Gary, this is so gorgeous. And they don't make them like this anymore. So this is incredibly majestic. I don't have to tell you. This is the riverside aptly named On the River. It is. But we could, uh, we could practically throw a softball to the other one yeah. that you own, the Pabst. Yeah. The Pabst Theater, which is this, a national historic landmark, an iconic theater that mm -hmm. has stood in the city of Milwaukee since 1895. And then near to my heart, right. Turner Hall. Right, which is a beautiful burnt out German dance hall. I do love Turner Hall, but I think this might be my favorite. This one's got this like palpable electricity in the air. And this place has got it so deep in every nook and cranny and gold leaf pour. But you do something so cool, which is why the show's here. Music and food have been wed together as long as we've been even slightly a civilized society. <laughs> yeah. We celebrate, it's true, with yeah. music and food. Music and food come together here because of Kevin Sloan. Yeah. Yeah, I tell you, we're, we're so very fortunate. I think Kevin's tremendous relationships uh, in the restaurant industry in the city of Milwaukee are part of what helped to drive us forward. I mean, the people that he's able to bring in to work with him make the day happened for us. And you've got to understand, for a good amount of days that we do the shows that we do, they come in at six or seven in the morning and quite often don't leave until one or two at night. Those are, those are like, those are restaurant hours. Those are restaurant <laughs> yeah. hours. Those are hardcore restaurant They're hours. Hardcore restaurant hours, but, yeah. there's, but there's also immediate gratification because it's not every day that you get to see Elvis Costello hang out backstage, play vinyl and, and drink a lot of coffee and talk about the food that he had all day long there. Kevin looks out in the dining room and he looks at an artist who is transformed yeah. by having this amazing meal. Yeah. He gets that response. There's 20 people having dinner tonight. 10 of those people, maybe up to 12 or 14, are in the bands. So I did a little research on the bands, where they're from, listen to their music a little bit and try to just get a feel and a sense of what they might like to eat. Like I said, I write a menu out like this and then we go and shop and some things might change a little. We are heading to the northwest side of Milwaukee, um, just off of Mill Road and 76th Street, a market called Fong Savan. In the back seat here, my uh, co-pilot is Cole Ursel. He's gonna be, uh, he's been cooking with me in the kitchens for the last couple months. He's gonna be with us today, shopping out like we normally do. You can see the two buildings here. This is the original building. I think it used to be an automotive shop where they rebuilt transmissions or something like that. And then this beautiful new building that just went up a few months ago. I think today what we're going to do is focus in the older building where they still have a lot of their dry goods. They have a little produce section, a really kick-ass cafe where we can get some stuffed wings. All right, let's do it. Um, yeah. Let's grab ourselves some, we need some bowls. Grab, uh, yeah, grab like six of those. Yes, right, we're running low on our stash at the theater, so tonight we're doing a sukiyaki dish with a nice like mushroom, maple, sesame broth. So we're gonna set these out um, and hopefully people use them. I 
kind of feel like I'm traveling when I roll into a spot like this, and, and I like that feeling. Well, it's not that I dislike shopping at Whole Foods, but um, here it just smells better, and I just like the vibe here. I need the fish sauce, and I need cilantro. I'm looking for some vegetables, maybe in the cabbage arena for the sukiyaki dish. And what else am I looking for? The, the rib belly. Yep. And a small order of rice. It's just like a, a Thai style. Sausage, they sell them a lot. I've bought them a few packs and cooked them up. The stuffed chicken wings here, hopefully they're ready already, but um, they're super amazing. Yep, that's the stuff right there. That is the stuff. I got an order of the pork rib belly. I got three stuffed chicken wings and some sticky rice. Appreciate it. I'm pulling out some sticky rice. Uh, this is like a pork. I'm not exactly sure, but I think it's part pork belly and part ribs. Um, it's just super tasty. I think they like, they probably like brine it, uh, smoke it, and then finish it in the fryer. It's like super crispy. This guy's got a little heat to it, so beware. Um, and then these guys here are some stuffed chicken wings. Legit, dude, thank you. Seriously. That skin is no joke. Well, we're gonna hop back in the Jeep and head uh, downtown. We're gonna go to Walker's Point to the new Cermak. And after Cermak, still in Walker's Point, we're gonna stop over at uh, Mushroom Mike's facility in the Harbor District there um, and pick up our mushroom order. And then we're gonna head over to the kitchen at the Riverside. We got some menu action. Right. We've got some produce to get. I'm thinking some greens. This guy should do the trick. They've got nice like Asian produce here, the cabbages and long beans. I gotta remember rice. I definitely need rice. Rice and dried mushrooms, which I wonder if they're gonna have those here. Yeah, we'll just rock these guys. Uh, we need creme fresh, right? You know, we got to keep moving uh, forward, but we'll, we'll get it done. We always do. So we are mushroom mic bound. You know, I, I order mushrooms, greens for the sukiyaki dish, some trumpets, and some chanterelles, yep. Maybe some garnishing flowers. This totally looks like a mushroom growing operation from the outside, doesn't it? What's up, Chief? How you doing? Doing good? How you doing, dude? Doing a little shopping today, I guess. Yeah, we're scooting all over town. What do you got for us? Cream of the crop, chanterelle buttons from this weekend that we picked. Our lion's manes, just some daylily buds, our blue mix of borage and cornflower blue babies. Those are gorgeous, uh, man. And some first of year lobsters from out west. Um, we have just a couple minutes because we're flying, but do you yep. want to just give Cole a peek yeah, at your coolers? And... These are all ready to go into the room. We kind of have been doing a three-tier stage after we grow them. We let them rest outside of the incubation room for a couple days. Uh, this is all mushrooms that are ready to start fruiting. And we bring everything in here. How wild is that? That's an <laughs> yeah. pink oyster. Yeah, that's our first strain of, uh, we got a really super strong strain from India in. Uh, pink oysters, so yeah, I can't the mycelium fat like red. 30 days? You know, yep, 30 days. So. Are these just cryo sealed eggs that are made for this? They breathe, but yep. yeah, they so breathe, but they're sealed. So we tell them where we want them to come out of the egg. Now you just get how many cuts can you get out of that? This is our seventh fruiting of our lion's mane mushrooms off these, but these ones are just about done. Do you have any dried mushrooms here? Yeah. Do you think I could just get like a small baggie? Awesome. Mm -hmm. Sweet. <laughs> 
How much is this guy? Pounder. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? That's what a pound is. Seven pounds. Seven pounds wet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For morels, yeah, especially because yeah. they're so light. Chanterelles, black trumpets, and then um, Konica morels. And I'm gonna use these for <clears throat> the base of the sukiyaki broth tonight. Throw it on my tab. Thank you. Appreciate it again. I said this to Kevin in the past when we were talking. I said, you know, somebody who's world famous for their art may come to Milwaukee for the first time, and the meal that they eat may be their only representation of our city. Yeah. That's a lot of pressure. It is and a lot of pressure, but you know what? I think that life is about exceeding expectations. You know, yeah. we have no desire to be mediocre. But that's the beauty of being able to have a hospitality team that's kind of, have kind of reimagined what hospitality is like in an American concert venue. Yeah, exactly. Right. So I want to see yeah. this kitchen because yeah. this is one of the kitchens that the rest of the world doesn't get to see, <laughs> but takes care of so many people that come to Milwaukee. Well, it's a great experience. You get to go up the elevator eight floors. Yes. To take a trip to see it. Oh, I love this old, I gotta say, this is so great. This is a legit old guard theater elevator. And eight floors later, here we are. Oh, right on. I like your style because your dining room and kitchen are on the penthouse level. This is what a well-heeled rock and roll dining room should look like. Yeah, vinyl, video games, great posters. And yeah, the reality is places like this, when you invite artists to come and play here, especially when you see big names like Tony Bennett, you know, Ryan Adams, Willie Nelson, when these types of artists come and perform here, they add the, the tens of millions of dollars worth of branding that's used in their names to be able to help to brand the city, to make it a cool place to come. People want to come to downtown Milwaukee now. That's incredibly rewarding because of what it is that we do. And we also understand that we're not just booking concerts or entertainment. We're not just hosting bands, we're not just feeding bands backstage. We feel like we're an integral part of changing the city and making the city a better place. Right. Yeah, this is a cool room. Like, I would want to hang out here for a long yeah. time. Hello, kitchen. Hello, chefs. How are you? Hi. So, what are you all working on? Here we've got some Lake Superior whitefish. We're doing a schnitzel for that. Uh, kind of old school German prep with some potato pancakes, some rote coal, applesauce, oh, creme fraiche. Great. Yeah. yeah, we always like to give somebody a little slice of uh, local flavor here. And at least for Cole and I, this is like right up our alley. This is starting root coal. It's just a, like a braised sweet and sour red cabbage. So I start out with onions, red or yellow, doesn't matter. And that, lots of pork fat. This is bacon fat. Then I'll come in all the cabbage that Julie shredded up and I'll kind of coat all the cabbage and duck fat. Then after that, I'll sprinkle in some sugar and then deglaze with a pretty heavy amount of red wine vinegar. So you get like a really nice, like sweet and sour kind of pungent cabbage with a nice crisp and it's like a really deep, beautiful purple. Uh, is this guy done, Cole? It's done, it's just hot. Kevin lets me always make the root coal, which I think is a good sign. I'm very German, my grandma makes cabbage. Like this Christmas she got hurt, couldn't make Christmas dinner. And so I had to captain the dinner ship and we brought it down to her at the hospital and she ended up telling me that it's not like hers but she actually thought it was pretty good. So I'll take that, I'll take it. You look like you're ready for service, my friend. You know, I wish that were the case. So I'm doing a uh, Provencal style fish stew. This was on the menu when I was cooking at Sanford's and there was so many things that I loved on the menu there, but this was my favorite thing. Caramelize some tomatoes uh, and some fennel that I'll chop up here. I've got a really nice um, fish stock that I made, a saffron infused fish stock. So that'll go in there as well. Um, after that simmers for a while, I'm gonna run that through a food mill and that'll give it uh, kind of squeeze all the flavor out of those vegetables. So we're gonna add this over here to this guy. Um, there's gonna be some white wine in there, some Pernod, and then we'll finish it. I've got some mahi that I'm gonna cut up, some grouper, some, some mussels, and some clams. Uh, back here, we still have the broth 
broth for the collard green sukiyaki. That's a, a Collard green sukiyaki? Yes, yeah, so we've got noodles, we've got collard greens, we've got all sorts of mushrooms. We've right got on. Daikon, a few other vegetables that we got at the Asian market today. And then we're just gonna add some maple syrup that I just brought back from my friends up north, Sue and Phil Miles. So I'm gonna dump that in in, I don't know, about a half an hour. We're still working on the plating for that. Um, and we're in the Riverside Theater right now on the yep. eighth floor, but the bands, two of them, are playing at the Pabst, sure. like two blocks Normally, away. Normally, yeah, we're gonna we have to think about plating a little bit differently. I write menus a little bit differently for shows that we have to pack up and send over there. <laughs> um, so you know, it's it's part of the gig. Hi there, welcome to Milwaukee. Thank you. Glad to have you guys. Yes. All right, so we're gonna run you through the line real quick. Um, this is, uh, if you're gonna start on one side, I'd say start down here. We made a um, Provencal, like uh, Southern French style soup. Um, here is just like a butter lettuce salad with, um, we made like an avocado green goddess dressing. Over here, we've got two dishes in the same chafing dish. This is a chicken larb that we ground in-house. This is a roasted lamb with uh, coriander chutney. Here's the collard green sukiyaki. Collard green's going all the way around. Uh, but we've got some nice local mushrooms from our forager, Mike. There's some uh, brown rice noodles in the middle and then uh, sesame maple broth in here. And then this one here is kind of, I always like to do like a Milwaukee or Wisconsin dish white fish schnitzel uh, with some potato pancakes. Underneath is a pickled red cabbage called rotkohl. And then we've got some potato pancakes back there with a little bit of sour cream. And there's some homemade applesauce right there. <laughs> Beautiful, unbelievable. <laughs> Thank you. Chef Sloan, if I knew you any less, I would feel self-conscious eating all this fantastic food in front of you. I'm gonna start with the lettuce wrap because yep. I like to go something light. That is the, the chicken. Um, I sauteed that really hard with some, some chili flakes, some garlic, a lot of lime. That's fantastic. And the, the fish here is a really nice white fish, mm -hmm. wild caught out of Lake Superior. This potato pancake, like that, that's gotta be a grandmother's recipe sure. on a little three by five. Yeah, right. You know, my, my cohort Cole made the potato pancakes as he normally does. He made a batch I, and I was in love with his recipe. So we just brought that back again um, for today. But that, like I said earlier, I always like to have one dish on the line that kind of represents Milwaukee. I love that. Fooder's identity. Sure. And I think the bands like it too. We also apparently do a fancy fish French bouillabaisse. We do. Fennel and tomato. I'm sorry, you said something. <laughs> That's the proper way to eat soup right there. Dude, that, that is, is the best. Do you want to try a bite of the lamb chop? I mean, do I? Sure, yeah. Get, Big get time. In there, Kyle. Like, you know I do. Yep. Yeah. So then I think the last thing we got here is the uh, sukiyaki. That broth in there, that is, we made a mushroom stock with some of the dried mushrooms that we got from Mushroom Mike. Um, there's little beauties. We also got, uh, there's some chanterelle and king trumpets in there, but just uh, speaking on the broth. Dude, that broth is amazing. <laughs> Thank it's ama you. It's electric. Thank you. I'm happy that um, I work for a company that it's important that we do things like this. I'm happy that now I have your other cell phone number and I can just show up <laughs> for dinner down here in the green room more often. Well, we do have security parked out front, mm -hmm. Kyle, so yeah. awesome. This is delicious. Well, good. Here, I'll like, cheers. Cheers, buddy. <laughs>